Huey Jensen. And uh, I always love seeing things like what we have here for Brian Brondwin. Everyone said that Reanimator was dead. Brian Brondwin writes an article, shows us it's not, and then displays it on camera. Here we begin Arbor Elf on turn one versus land. So Jensen going to draw a Gavany Township for the turn again. His Elves deck is basically mono green has a small white splash or a couple locks on spiders and those gavany township activations of course sun petal grove temple garden and absence pilgrim will help to turn on that gavany township and that smiter as you do see the temple garden coming to play tap and a pilgrim there for jensen so we'll see what Brondwin has on his turn it's going to be an elvish mystic via a woodland cemetery as turn three Five mana is a flashpoint for Jensen's deck, so we'll he see if he does have a Hydra or if he has a Wolf or Silver Art, and it is going to be the Colonial Hydra, and this is the difficult thing for Brondwin because look at his board. What can he have to take care of this? One Putrefy in his main deck, That's and also, pardon me, two Fiend Hunters. He can't cast a Fiend Hunter unless he gets another white mana, though. Other than that, he's going to have to wait until he can find himself one Shadowborn Demon or get one of the two Angels of Serenity into play. That's a rough choice. I mean, a rough... Uh, that's not much chances on that, honestly. So we see a mulch here from Brondwin. An Overgrown Tomb and an Isolated Chapel go to the hand. An Avistan's Pilgrim and a Restoration Angel go to the graveyard, which means that he will not be putrefying this turn. He will not be fiend hunting this turn, but he will be taking a significant amount of damage from a very angry Hydra on his next turn. We see a land... That's one, two, three, four, five. He's got a land. Huey can play a sixth mana into play. See, we Jensen, see considering his options, I mean, one thing he can do that we've certainly seen over the course of this weekend is playing another Colonial Hydra pre-combat, attacking with the one that he does have in play. It'll pump up the jam on both of the Hydras. This is going to play a Temple Garden on tap, so maybe he's looking for six mana. We might just see a Township activation as well. But he's going to go with a Silver Heart. Wolfier Silver Heart. Going to pair up with the Arbor Elf. Get in here, resolve the trigger on the Hydra a little bit bigger, and that's a whole lot of damage, my right friend. Right there, you got eight plus five. That is 13 damage. This puts Brian Braun to win down to a precarious six. Normally, a Colonial Hydra needs to, you know, maybe push through something to get there for the final damage, but with the six life, it'll be 16 power next turn. You see a Grizzly Salvage here from Brondwin, a Cavern of Souls, a Restoration Angel, an Overgrown Tomb, a Fiend Hunter, and another Grizzly Salvage. So, you know, he does have the option to add a Fiend Hunter. He does have the White Man to cast it, but is playing a Fiend Hunter on this next turn actually going to get the job done? It looks like he's going to go reaching for that and say that's good enough. Probably was looking for an Angel of Serenity off of that quote, draw five with an unbarrel rights in his hand, but he did not find one as he draws a card for the turn, and we'll see if he can do anything to stop this large army of green monsters here from Huey Jensen. Right now, after he lays a land, he'll have two mana post Fiend Hunter. So let's presume, for the sake of argument, he takes the Hydra out momentarily. He's still facing down an eight power and a five power creature, mm -hmm. and there is a Gavney Township in play. There's the Fiend Hunter. And remember, there is another one casting cost, 1-1, one, one, hiding there amongst the lands. It's an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. So Jensen is going to draw his card again. Has an 8-8 eight, eight Wolfier Silverheart, a 5-5 five, five Arbor Elf in play. So two very big bodies. See if he's going to play anything to get this turn started here. Could have a land, another Wolfier Silverheart. We could see a Gavney Township activation. Here's five and six. There's oh, Garrick. It's going to minus three. Put Crater of Behemoth in play and finish the game off. So William Huey Jensen is going to win game number one with his mono green elves deck. Brian Braun to win. He's got his back against the wall already. And you can see exactly what we talked about leading into this matchup. Braun to win in his junk reanimator deck. It, does, it just simply doesn't interact very well right. in this matchup. As right. We're going to bring it back to the booth here because it is time for our first of many premium That's giveaways right. today. We've talked about them over the course of the weekend. We're giving away, of course, our quarterfinals, our semifinals, and our finals during the quarterfinals, three months of premium. During the semifinals, it's going to be six months of premium. And in the finals, a copy of Next Level Deck Building, Patrick Chapin's new ebook. So make sure you do stay with us all day long because we'll be doing three giveaways in each. We've, we've got three sets of elimination rounds today. That's right. So this first one, if you were just watching us while we were going through the top eight brackets, mm -hmm. Pretty easy. First of all, though, how do you play with the premium giveaway? It's quite simple. Down there on the bottom, you can see that hashtag SCG Premium. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to ask you a trivia question. At the end of this round, we'll give you the answer of that trivia question. If you have correctly answered the trivia question using the hashtag SCG Premium on Twitter, what we'll do, one person from amongst those who successfully answer the question will be selected to receive three free months of Star City Games Premium this round. Absolutely. And the trivia question's pretty simple. All right. If you were listening to that bracket. If you say so. I, well, I think so. I okay. think so. There were, uh, you know, eight players in our top eight, as you'd expect, but three of them were playing a boogeyman deck. Yep. Three of them were the bad guy, yep. or if you like, if you're Patrick Chapin, the good guy. Sure. Patrick likes the winning decks. Yeah. What archetype is represented by three players in this, our Star City Games Open Series standard? Top eight. What archetype has three copies in our top eight? A little softball for you. It's early in the morning. It is early in the morning. Make sure that, you know, if you've been watching all night, you got bleary eyed, kept playing Magic Online, you got your four hours of sleep, and then you're <laughs> I like, would oh, never do that. No not way. Not me. Yeah. Not me. So make sure that you answer that with the hashtag SCG Premium. You can put a lot of other stuff on there, hopefully the correct answer, but we need that hashtag if we're going to give you a chance to win that prize. Perfect. We'll take a look at the sideboards here. We're going to start with Bronda Wins. I know you have that in front of you. He's got a difficult matchup for him here. You know, he doesn't, I don't, I don't believe he has additional Angel Serenities in his sideboard, but what does he have to potentially turn things around here? Well, the first card that I see that I look to and think, that's a good one, Golgari Charm. Okay. If you go minus one, minus one in an army of elves, if they don't have an Arch Druid leading them, well, down they all fall. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, though, I think Brian is going to bring in every single one of his short removal spells from the Abrupt Decays um, and the Putrefy. So that's one point and click, one point and click. Also the Fiend Hunter, and then finally Garrick Relentless is going to be a card that he'll bring in to make it be three Garrick Relentless in order to shoot down creature after creature. Take a look at Jensen's sideboard. He has to believe as he has a look at Bronwyn's deck list. He has to understand, I mean, he gets the opportunity to look to see how Bronwyn's gonna try to interact with him. So you see his sideboard. He's got four Stranger Root Guys, three Acidic Slimes, three Tree of Redemption, two Rangers Guile, three Garrick Relentless. Garrick Relentless is very, very good in matchups that revolve around Mana Accelerants. He knows that Bronwyn has seven versus Jensen has, excuse me, I don't wanna say only, but he has 12. You can say 16 if you wanna count Elvish Arc Druid. So I think Garrick Relentless is gonna come in here the other options, again, Tree of Redemption, not really for this matchup. For Mono Red, Strangle Root, guys, it's really not about that kind of resilient threat. Acidic Slime, he could bring in here because it would be kind of ironic to see Bronduin right. actually lose to a card that qualified him for Pro Tour Dublin. And then you see the two copies of Ranger's Guile, which are kind of meh here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see at least one or two copies of Acidic Slime come in. Not sure if all three are necessary, especially when he's on the draw. Right. But Garrick Relentless is a card that can actually come out early enough for Jensen and steal the initiative back. And then he can actually sacrifice a creature, tutor up a Colonial Hydra, tutor up a Crater of Behemoth, and kind of get things going that way. So I think Garrick Relentless is pretty easy to board in. Acidic Slime, that's another question. What do you think about uh, the newfangled Dragon's Maze split card over there? What do you, I mean, is that something that's going to happen? Profit loss? Yeah. You know, I actually like this card a lot, it, and it's been, you know, it's been picking up quite a bit as well. Um, AJ Soccer playing it to a lot of success last week in the Star City Games Open Series in Richmond. Some other players playing their sideboard. Jerry Thompson, a huge advocate of this card. Basically, you know, this is a, th this is a, a, a versatile card. Absolutely. Um, you know, and the minus one, minus one, we talk about how good Golgari Charm can be in this matchup. I think you just want a redundant effect of that so that you can make sure that Jensen never does get to accelerate the way that he actually wants to because if he does, like we saw in the previous game, there's no way for Bronduin to win. Yeah. I mean, as long as he can use an Abrupt Decay or a Putrefy or a Garrick Relentless to keep a um, Arch Druid off the table, that's just another way to clear up the, the board. Now, it's expensive, of course, compared to uh, the Golgari Charm. And doing both sides of the equation might not ever come into it, but uh, the one side, that seems like it could be effective if he can make sure that there's not, uh, you know, an elf lord making the elves a little too big for it. I think we're throwing a mulligan over there from, uh, from Jensen. Yeah, now the one thing about Jensen's deck from Goldfishing a lot yesterday with him in between rounds and just talking to him about the deck, you know, the one thing that he said is this deck does not mulligan incredibly well. Um, you know, it's kind of a boom bust type deck when it's operating like it, when it's operating on, on all cylinders, it's, it's very difficult to beat. But, you know, mulligans can really just tear this deck apart because it does have some variance with its draws. Some of the time it'll have, you know, a lot of creator of behemoths and Garrick's. Some of the time it'll just have the problem that you mentioned of, I've got all these Manic Celerants and I didn't draw anything to sell yep. to. The classic turbo nothing. Yep. And uh, a lot of decks that are like this, where they're not purely a combo-rific deck, you know, if you're not gonna actually use, you know, your entire turn to cast most of your deck, 
sometimes you end up every card that is down is just one less opportunity to put enough mana together and then also have something useful to do with it. Quick update for you guys in a three versus six match. Chad Castle playing Jund against Eric Chesneski playing Mono Red. Castle is up a game. We thought that he would win that matchup, and it certainly doesn't hurt that he's on the play as well as the three seed. So he does win game number one. As we see, Bronduin's going to play an Overgrown Tomb into an Arbor Elf. Jensen playing a Forest into an Avacyn's Pilgrim. So they both have Mana Accelerants. They're both ahead of schedule. We'll see what they can do while they are ahead of schedule as here is Navison's Pilgrim, and mm. now an, an abrupt decay to take care of Jensen's Navison's Pilgrim. Look how far ahead Ron DeWin is right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the things that is very reminiscent of the old Junk Reanimator Mirror, the early game is all about who gets the mana advantage. Now, uh, Bron DeWin only has seven one mana accelerators. Jensen has 12, but Bron DeWin also has removal. Yeah, that's, and that's the difference here, you know. Jensen does have copies of Garrick Relentless, but, you know, the earliest that he can actually cast that card is on turn three, so he can't get it out very quickly, and Bronduin can actually interact with Huey by playing a card like Abrupt Decay, playing a card like Profit Loss, as we're going to see an Elvish Arc Druid here from Jensen that's going to resolve as he does pass the turn back. Resto Besto Angel here for Bronduin on Jensen's end step, but this is what's going to change things around for Bronduin in the sideboard of games is because he does have early interaction in addition to that mana acceleration that you mentioned. Now, uh, in Jensen's hand, we saw lurking a Garrick Relentless. Grizzly Salvage, oh, there it is, Profit Loss. Grizzly Salvage reveals uh, Profit Loss, Land, Land, Restoration Angel, and, and a Putrefy. Uh, putrefy. So Bronduin can take a land, he can take a Restoration Angel as well. Kind of stinks for him that he's going to go by that Singleton Profit Loss. Also going to go by a Putrefy that could take care of a Colonial Hydra, a Wolf or Silverheart, or, you know, if the situation calls, a Crater Hoof Behemoth. So, decisions, decisions for the Junk Reanimator Master. One of the things that all of these players in our top eight and in all of our top eight have access to is the deck list of their opponent. So, there are no longer any surprises. Jensen knows that that is the only profit lost in the 75 cards of Brian Bronduin's list. In comes Restoration Angel, Bronduin going to take the Temple Garden that he did grab off of the Grizzly Salvage, put it into play tapped, and pass the turn back. Has three mana available on Jensen's turn, as Jensen does draw his card. We'll see if he does have a fifth mana source or not. We know he has a Garrick Relentless in his hand, also has a Garrick Caller of Beast as well. I don't think he, I don't think he has more mana, but we'll see. The uh, thing that's awesome about the Elf Lord we see in play there, it taps for a green mana for every Elf in play and on your side, and for itself. That makes this um, this freshly cast elf essentially free. Mm -hmm. He gets three mana from his lord, two more after that. Oh, that's a pilgrim, my bad. I thought that, I saw that um, Avacyn's pilgrim as an elf, my apologies. But yeah, for every elf that is cast, it is essentially free in the face of that archdruid. Garrick Relentless comes down, going to fight the Avacyn's pilgrim, Flipping to Garrick the Veilker, so now Jensen is threatening to search out some relevant bodies. You know, I don't think it's time for Acidic Slime to come out to the party, but again, Colonial Hydra can win a game very, very quickly, so maybe he wants to search for that. Maybe he wants to go hunting for something like a Crater Hoof Behemoth. We'll see exactly what route he wants to take moving forward, and we'll see if Bronduin even cares about that Garrick the Veilker, because he can just finish it off with a Restoration Angel right now if he wants to. And as someone who has cast a lot of Garrick Relentlesses in his day, he understands exactly how good Garrick the Veilcursed can be from green decks. That tutor ability, irreplaceable, and he is going to finish off the Veilcursed. Yeah, there's no way he can allow Jensen to pick up, let's say, another Lord, let's say, a uh, if he's got enough mana for it, a Crater Hoof Behemoth, or anything else. There's lots of options in a deck like this Elves deck that are very frightening. Who knows, maybe Jensen brought in Acidic Slimes. He doesn't want to see the Acidic Slimes start coming down. And then we see Unburial Rites bringing back the, <laughs> the Avacyn's Pilgrim. I mean, this is a loud announcement here from Bronduin. If he's Unburial Rites-ing and Avacyn's Pilgrim, that's a very loud announcement that, okay, I don't have another land to play, but also I have an Angel of Strength in my hand that I really, really, really want to cast. And I don't want to rely on myself having to top deck a land to be able to do so. So give me the 1-1 one, one back, give me access to 7 mana, give me access to triple white, and if you don't do something right now, Huey, Angel of Serenity is going to come down, I'm going to clear out your board, and this game is basically over. And I think Jensen knows that, which is why you see the facial expression right now. 
Now, one of the things we've seen with, uh, with Jensen in the past, you've seen this expression. I mean, if you took a picture of that, if you took a picture of that, you'd think, oh my God, this is the perfect exam example of somebody that's having a tortured thought. But I've seen him do that a couple times this weekend, and usually it's just he's thinking. He's, he's not, you know, in the, a world of deep stress. He's just thinking, and you know, it's sort of like with Patrick Chapin. If you've watched Patrick Chapin play, one of the things that happens is that he gets this, uh, what appears to be a nervous shake, and you're like, oh, is he worried? No, that's just where he ends up with his, uh, how his body works when he's playing Magic. Quick update for you as we watch Jensen take his turn. That matchup between Castle and Chesneski, they are tied up right now. So Eric able to come back in game number two with his mono red deck against Chad playing Jun. We'll find out who's going to win game number three of that Castle Chesneski matchup. As soon as we know, we'll let you guys know as Jensen reaching for that Elvish Mystic. Looks like that's coming into the red zone as a 2-2. Mirandwin, no interest in blocking, unsurprisingly, as Jensen's going to add some mana to his mana pool. Looks like we're going to see a Colonial Hydra. There's a tap land. He's going to pass the turn back, crossing his fingers, hoping that Angel of Serenity does not join the party. You know, that would be a really, really great favor from Brian Brondwin to not have an Angel of Serenity in his hand. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wonder, in that matchup, we're not watching the Eric versus Chad matchup, I wonder if Burning Earth came in to play in that John matchup. Would not be surprised if it did at all, as Brondwin draws his card for the turn, thinking things through, doesn't feel like an Angel of Serenity, I think he would have slammed it down if he did have it, which means he might be in a little bit of trouble here, depending on what's in his hand. I mean, when you're staring down a Colonial Hydra that's ready to attack you the next turn, the game can end in an instant. I mean, that thing can become an 8-8. With the Gavany Township, it's gonna double the counters on everything that comes into play due to its trigger, as here comes Restoration Angel into the red zone. So things can get very ugly for him in a hurry here. I'm very interested to see what those two cards are left in his hand. I mean, at the sevens, uh, he could also be doing, say, a Fiend Hunter with a Restoration Angel in response to the uh, trigger. Um, did he just lay another land? So... Yeah, he played a Woodland Cemetery. Okay, so now he's at eight mana. Now remember, he unburial rights a mana producer, so what is it that he wanted to cast? I mean, it was a pretty loud announcement that he, he wanted to be close to being able to cast a certain card. Here's a Restoration Angel, that's gonna get unburial rights back, so it looks like he's trying to just gum up the board, and he just has to pass the turn back, so you know maybe he has a Putrefy in his hand, maybe he's trying to feign a little bit of weakness here as Jensen draws a Sun Petal Grove. He also has a Garrick Relentless in his hand, does Jensen, and I believe a Garrick Caller Beast as well. So he can cast one of those Planeswalkers rather easily right now. Caller of Beasts is just such a monster as well. I mean, it costs six mana, and it seems like it might be broken there. If it cost any less, I wouldn't, well, we wouldn't even need had a discussion when it was printed whether it was good or not. Yeah, I don't think it could cost anything less than six mana. Here comes your Hydra, there's your trigger. You see the die placed on there. So now it's an 8-8 Trampler coming into the red zone. For oh. Brian Brondwin, he might not be too concerned about going down to 8 at this point because, for the most part, that next swing is still going to kill him either way. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see 4 mana. Here's a Garrick Relentless. That's going to take care of Avacyn's Pilgrim. Brondwin does still have the necessary white mana to be able to cast Angel of Serenity if he does top deck one, as there is the Garrick the Veil Cursed going to show up with two counters. Brondwin wow. going to untap. Looks like he has absolutely nothing at this juncture. Draw a card. Looks like it was a land. Yeah, that looked like a land. Now, the Avacyn's Pilgrim that has, was just killed, he worked so hard to get back into play. I wonder if he was just hoping to be able to uh, create opportunities like a Grizzly Salvage into an Angel of Serenity, yep. a Mulch into like uh, Unburial Rites, that kind of thing, having yeah, enough mana for everything. Try to spike a perfect Mulch, maybe try to spike a perfect Grizzly Salvage, something of that nature. You know, he may have just decided, I have nothing else to do this turn, so I might as well cast this value on Burial Rites to get myself to the necessary mana if I do draw Angel of Serenity. Maybe that's why that happened two turns ago. Yeah. It, but either way, I mean, if he did draw a land this turn, and it looks like he did. There's a Godless Shrine. You know, he's staring a Colonial Hydra in the face that's going to turn into a 16-16. He's also staring in the face a Garrick of Veilcurse that he knows can search up Crater of Behemoth. He knows it can search up Wolf here's Silverheart. He's seen both of those cards already. This can't be a very good feeling if you're Bronduin. And he says go. Yep. That, yeah, that does not feel good. <laughs> He'll draw his card. 
Jensen gonna add a mana. He's gonna sacrifice a creature to Garrick the Veil Cursed in Addison's Pilgrim. He's gonna go tutoring. I've got a feeling we're gonna go see the hoof, and we do. And if he does play this Garrick Caller of Beasts, he'll be able to do exactly what he did the last game. He does have a mana floating. In comes Garrick, bye-bye Veil Cursed. Dramatic entrance, the hoof, there it is. Trigger, red zone. He remembers all those triggers. Brian Brondwin dispatched two to zero very, very easily by a probable Hall of Famer, William Huey Jensen, mm -hmm. on this year's ballot. A favorite amongst uh, many Americans are voting for him. But Brian Brondwin, a strong fight out of a thousand players to push into this top eight and dispatched by William Huey Jensen. Yeah. Jensen, again, this matchup for him is a very, very good one. You guys can see that at home. You know, the way those games played out, neither game was particularly close. You know, I don't think Braun DeWin's draws were, were very bad. You know, things didn't pan out for him a ton in that second game. He got off to a very nice start, but then things kind of slowed down for him. Again, remember that Jensen took a mulligan that game as well for a deck that doesn't mulligan incredibly well, and he was just kind of, eh, you know, kind of just messing around, nothing too great happening, but again,